Hey guys, welcome back to another Tie-In Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Kai, and today we're gonna to be tying up a fun pattern, uh, the Tinsel Trout Stacker. It's available commercially through Folding Mill, um, comes in quite a few different colors, both the tinsel and the beads, so uh, don't get stuck doing what you see here. Um, definitely a good one to get creative with. Gonna be fishy no matter what. So in the vise, we've got the new Umqua X-Series XC290. Um, a mean little nymph um, wet streamer hook is what they refer to it as, um, but super good nymph hook. A little bit of a down eye, I think it's one times long. And then in for the bead, we're using a fire hole stone, uh, 2.5 mil in black. So we'll go ahead and get started with our thread just right behind the eye. I'm using the Nano Silk 50 denier in black, um, definitely my favorite thread ever. Plenty of strength. Never gonna break on you, so. We'll go ahead and get a nice thread base laid down there. Um, and then next step, we're gonna tie in what's gonna be our rib. I'm using a 2.0 millimeter silver wire. Um, this one's from Semperfy. Another part of the thread or the fly here that you could definitely substitute out different colors. Um, do whatever you have on hand or whatever you think will look good. We'll get that secured in. Um, the next step is going to be this green Vivas holographic tinsel. Uh, I think it's actually chartreuse, but nice and bright and it should pop out pretty well against the rest of the fly. Um, this one's really fun to fish on the nymph rig. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of takes as it's swinging towards the end of your drifts. Uh, we took it out past weekend to the Roaring Fork River and it was hands down kind of the fly of the weekend. Um, got a lot of fish in this green variation, um, but red, orange, blue are some of my favorites as well. So after we get our tinsel and our ribbing in, we're gonna find a little bit of tail. Um, we're using some natural pheasant, just a natural. This one's been pretty well used, of course. Uh, you're gonna want like six or seven fibers. Is gonna be just right. Bushiness for the tail and then enough to contrast as you go over the back. Um, so good little clump of fibers. Gonna want the ends as straight as you can make them. And then we'll tie that in with one wrap here at the very back of the shank. And then we're gonna carefully go in front and take that up and over to the head. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and take our holographic tinsel and wrap it up. Here with this first wrap, you'll notice I push this pheasant tail back. Um, that's great. We're going to use that to go over the top as kind of the back of the fly. Push it back and get it out of the way and then it's going to lay over top just right. So we'll bring our Vivas holographic up to the eye and tie it off. And then we'll take this pheasant tail back over here. You're going to want it to lay as flat as possible. Um, try to keep it from twisting and overlapping on itself. And then I'll do it facing myself a tiny bit because as I go around here with the wire rib, it's going to slightly push it up onto the right onto the back of the shank. So we'll tie that in loosely somewhat and then start our wraps here with our silver rib. Should really make this pop and give us some great segmentation. So we'll take that again all the way up to the eye and secure it off. Get in here now that our pheasant tail's not going anywhere. Trim it. Make sure our wire rib is nice and secure and then helicopter this on out. Cool. So you could probably finish it here and catch all fish all day, but I think the next two steps are really what makes it important. 
Uh, we're going to double layer it sort of with soft tackle, um, two of the best soft tackles ever to live. It's going to be the CDC and then some partridge to finish it off. So for the CDC feather, we're going to go ahead and split the thread. Even though this nano silk is so thin and strong, it's pretty easy to flatten out and split down. Um, I find it kind of frays and gets twisted up a lot less than like an ultra thread. So I really like doing the split thread with it. Uh, then we're gonna go take this nice big natural CDC feather, um, clean it up just right and slide it right in. Um, if you wanted or needed, you could certainly use some kind of material clip here. Um, but usually once you get it in there, it's gonna be all right. So we'll go ahead with some scissors and trim it between the stem and our thread. And you're gonna want the trimming to be as close to you as you can get it to that thread. And then we're gonna go ahead, get control of our thread and spin it up real easily. It doesn't take too much to get it spun in here to where it's stuck. Um, but if you do do that initial spin too aggressively, uh, your CDC will fly out. So. Take it a little easy with that first step. And then once you're all wound in, you can go ahead and palmer it on. So you got your nice CDC mess. Um, again, you could end the fly here. It's gonna fish great. We'll go ahead and peel it back just to clean up our CDC. We don't want it to be too long. Um, we want it to go to about the tail, end of the tail, at the very longest, so. Couple more wraps there, and then next, as I mentioned, we're giving this guy the double soft tackle. Um, I went ahead and picked out the appropriate sized feather of partridge from the cape. Um, mid mid size, not too small, not too big, and then we'll strip it down. I want this to be enough to wrap about mm, one and a half, two times around the front of my collar. And then you'd want plenty of stem here to grab with either your finger or a uh, hackle pliers, whatever. So we'll go ahead and kind of grab the tip of our partridge, preen this on back and nip it here to give us a, a good tie in point. Uh, the nano soap can be kind of slippery, so if you want, you could put a little wax on it before you do that, just to help hold that feather. Um, but if you tie it in well, it should stay, no problem. So go ahead and get our partridge tied in, and then we will grab the end of it Oop. with our hackle pliers, and then very gently Wrap this around. Should take it about one and a half, two times to the stem. And we'll make sure this is secured in real well before we cut out this excess. back and secure it with a couple more wraps right behind the bead. There you've got your, your double hackle. Um, and this here I think is what makes it really effective when you're swinging it towards the end of your drift. Um, get a lot of takes there. So don't take the flies out of the water too early. Uh, last step, we're gonna finish it with just a little hairline Here's ear plus dub and collar. Um, another spot here on the fly, you could experiment with materials, you know, and give it a hot spot collar, um, use your favorite dub. But uh, since it does have that pretty bright flashy body, I like to keep the rest of it pretty neutral and discreet. It's a little thick. So we'll pull a couple out, rewrap. Then we'll finish it up with a whip finish. So 
super buggy looking fly, super messy. Um, I will mention that Folding Mill commercially pulls their pheasant tail all the way over the top. I like to tie all my flies in the round um, a little easier and I think the fish like them no matter what. So there's the tinsel trout stacker. Change the bead color, change the tinsel color, change the rib. Um, have fun tying this one up. Fish are going to eat it no matter what. Thanks a lot.